Abba Yahuwah, I just want to thank you, my King. I thank you for your Shabbat, my Father. I thank you for your set-apart day, for the day that you have set apart for your people to be able to come and enter into your presence, Father. I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, for the grace that we have to be able to be sons and daughters of the Most High. I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, for your grace and for your love and for your mercy. And for that which you are doing in this hour, where you are raising up a Joshua generation, a generation that needs to be able to come into their promised land, to be able to take their inheritance, to be able to move forward as you are wanting to raise up a people in this hour that will hear, that will see, and that will do. We do not want to be those that are going to be able to be deaf to what is going on around us, but we want to have ears to hear and we want to have eyes to see. Father, I pray, open up our spiritual ears, open up our spiritual eyes so that we may be those that can have the discernment in the hour because truly when Yeshua came, he came to set the captives free. He came to give sight to those that are blind. I ask you, Abba Yahuwah, that you will help your people, help us, Father, not to be led astray by blind guides, not to be led astray by those that will speak and those that will be able to lead your people astray. But in the hour that we are in, that you are starting to raise up a standard, a standard of purity, a standard of holiness, a standard of set-apartness, that you are wanting your people to not be those that will just follow blindly, but they will be those that will start to hear, those that will start to be able to follow, because you say your sheep will hear your voice and the voice of a stranger they shall not follow. Father, I thank you that we will follow you wherever you go. I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, because when Yeshua was on the Mount of Transfiguration, he stood the one side, was Moshe, the understanding that we need, the foundation, which we have our foundations of the Torah that was given us. And then who stood by him was Elijah, the prophet, that everything is standing on the, on the prophets and on the foundation of the Torah. And Messiah Yahushua, the three together, Messiah Yeshua that came to be able to give us the renewed covenant in the renewed covenant that we can walk in. But together, there is a fullness of that that we need to be able to walk in. We cannot be one-sided. We cannot say we can only have the one and not have the other because we need the fullness of a foundation. And that is why you said, Man needs to build a house on a solid foundation because if a foundation is not solid and it is not built, it is going to be able to come and fall in the time of the storm. And the storm is coming. The storm is almost upon us. And just when you hear the cry of peace, peace, just when you hear the cry of, of the people that are starting to let down their guard, because everything is returning to normal, then that is when we should tremble, because we should know that destruction is at hand. And so I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, that we need to be those that have ears and that have eyes that can see and that can discern the hour and the time that we are in. That we will not just be able to be led only by teachers who will teach, but not the prophetic because you are everything that stands in the prophetic utterances. Because everything about your word is prophetic. And so I praise and I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, that you have put your people, each one, with their giftings in order to be able to know what it is that you are doing. Because we need a body. A body cannot function of itself. Because a, a body needs to be able to be different limbs. And that is why we need the fullness of your body. And so 
I praise and I thank you, Father, that we only have one head. And the head is Messiah Yoshua. And he is the one that is going to be able to lead and bring together a body that is only he that can do that. It's not man's doing. It's not by might. It's not by power. But it's by your Ruach HaKodesh. And so I praise and I thank you, Father, that you will be able to come and speak truth to us in this day. For the every single distraction that the enemy wants to bring, to be able to come and bring distraction in our minds, in our lives, to be able to come and steal the word, to be able to come and steal the word that is being spoken. Father, I silence the voices of the enemy that would want to come and steal the word. I thank you, Father, that this word will fall on good soil. Good soil that will produce a harvest and is not going to be choked and is not going to fall on shallow soil, but it is going to be able to produce the harvest that it needs to produce because we are those that are changing from glory to glory. And when we come to the end of this church, we will understand that that is why we need to go through a fire. No one can have glory, gold, without it having to go through fire. And so I thank you, Abba Father, that you put us through the fire so that we may be able to have the fire of your purification, so that we will not be those that are blind, so that we will not be those that are poor, so that we will not be those that are wretched, so that we are not be those that are pitiable, but we will, and we will not be those that are naked, but we will be clothed with Messiah Yoshua, the one who is the author and the finisher of our faith. And Father, I pray, help us to be able to understand what is it that makes us blind? What is it that makes us naked? What is it that makes us stumble and fall? And so I thank you, Abba Yahuwah, that you are the one that is going to be able to take your people and lead them by the hand in order for us to be able to come into the fullness of the things that you have ordained as you truly have come to set your captives free and to be able to have us walk in the richness of your word that comes to be able to fill us to overflowing. And you blow your ruach within us to be able to come and bring the fire of your purification so that we may be able to be those that will shine your light in a darkness hour, in a dark time for all to see who you are. And so I thank you, Father, for this word, that you will be able to be the one to speak to my mind and speak through the, my lips your oracles so that your people may be able to hear. In Yahushua's name I pray this. Amen. Amen. And so we come and we are going to look and continue with our church of Laodica or Laodicea. And we are going to continue to look as we looked at last week. We focused on as we were looking at when he spoke and he said, because you say rich I am and rich and I am made rich. And so we understood last week and we had a look and we understood that very much this is a church that focuses a lot on a prosperity and this is the prosperity gospel that we have been taught. And man, we understand that Abba truly wants to bless his people and not by one minute will I turn around and say that we do not need the prosperity, but the prosperity was not supposed to be for us to enrich ourselves, but the prosperity so that we may be able to be a blessing wherever we go, that we can be a blessing for Abba Yahuwah and for the glory and the honor of his name and for his kingdom. And so today we are going to continue to look at verses 17 and we are going to go deep for us to be able to understand what it is that the Father is wanting to teach us because He's told us about the fact that we have been made rich and we spent an entire session on understanding this. And now today we are going to look at the fact that he says, and need none at all and do not know that you are wretched. So he's telling us, he's saying to this church, you are wretched, you are pitiable, you are poor, you are blind, you are naked. So what does he mean by this? 
What does he mean? He is telling us that this is what we are. So if he's telling us that this is what we are, then we need to understand that if we are in the snare of being able to be blind, if we are in a snare that we are being naked, if we are in a snare that we are wretched, then this means that we need to come out of there. Just like we need to be able to come out of the place where we think we are rich, but yet we are poor. Because the richness that we have should be the richness of the things of the kingdom. Of understanding the treasure that has been given us. Of the word of Yahuwah that gives us the riches that we are being able to be able to put in the heavens. And so we're going to look at this word wretched. And so this word wretched, what does it mean? What does the word wretched mean? The word wretched means tahai paros. Tahai paros. And it's G5005. So this means enduring toils and troubles, afflicted, and that you are miserable. So it's when you are in this place of where you find yourself in this wretched place. And so we must understand that this word means that we are enduring toils. So there are toils going on in our lives and there are troubles and we are afflicted and we are miserable. You see, so we always have choices in our lives. The choices that we have. Okay, I'm just going to put on my earphones because people are battling to hear. Oh, okay, can you all hear me? Okay. Sorry. Okay, so we are going to understand that wretched, to be in a place of being wretched, is really at the end of the day going to be a choice. Because when we look next week, we are going to focus on looking at the trials that we have to go through, the purification of the fire. We are going to either allow that purification in our lives to bring us into a place of where we are going to be able to be bitter or better. So purification can bring us into a place of being better or being bitter. The choice is ours. And so we need to understand that these troubles is part of this being wretched. But we don't need to stay in a wretched place. We will be in a toil place. We will be afflicted and we will be miserable. And this is a person that has choice, a choice to stay in this place. It's a choice to be in a wretched place. And then there is pitiable and this is to be pitied and miserable. So you see, many times people want pity. And they're not to stay in this place of being in being self-pity. Because self-pity is not a place that the Father wants us to stay in. And so we want to sometimes feed on this place of being, you know, self-pitied. I remember my husband many times when I used to come and complain about certain things that I used to, you know, that I'm going through certain things. And then the father say, shame, are we feeling sorry for ourselves? Are we feeling sorry for ourselves? Do you want to go into the cupboard and go and sit in that little cupboard and feel sorry for yourself? We must understand that we have been given the authority to be able to raise up above this. But you see, he's talking about people that are staying in a place because of things that are going on around them. And this is why we must understand. There are those that are wretched. And there are those that are pitiable. Why? Because they will choose to be miserable. They will choose to want to be pitied. They want to be pitied by people. Because this is how they, um, uh, um, how they feel better about themselves. And so in everything we must understand... We must have the mind of Yahushua. And so the enemy will bring things against us to be able to bring us into a place of where we 
can be so bogged down by the things that surround us. But yet we need to be able to understand that the Father has given us the authority to raise above us above it. And we will understand that if these fires do not come, we will stay in those places. And this is what we're going to understand. By the end of today, you are going to understand that there are many trials and many tests that will befall us because Father is wanting to purify us. And that is what this church is about. This church needs to be able to, the whole thing is because they need to be able to buy gold from him to be refined by fire. Because this is a church that thinks that somewhere they've arrived. They have arrived, but yet they have not. They are still wretched. They are still in their toils and their troubles. They are still miserable and they are poor. What does this poor mean? Petkohos. Petkohos is the word for poor. And it's G4434. And this means reduced to beggary. Begging. Asking for alms. You see, sure, I sometimes wonder some of these places where they have such a need to be able to advertise the fact that they need money to come in, are they really putting their trust and their faith in the Father? What are they behaving as? If we have our trust and our faith in the Father, Father will lay it on the hearts of the people of those that will need to be able to sow. That was the word that he's always given me. I will be the one that will take care of you, my child. But yet you will turn around and you will listen to all these, <laughs> these ministries. And now they need to be able to sell all their books freely they were given. And then they need the gospel becomes for the rich. And only the rich can afford the gospel. And this is so not the father's heart. And so they violated, and that's why Yahushua was overturning the tables in the temple. And he grabbed a whip and he said, my house has become a den of robbers. What are you doing? You have made the things of Yahuwah items for you to sell. What have you done? What have you done? I understand that many times, you know, printing costs and things like that need to be able to be, um, you know, you need to pay for these printing costs. But let me tell you something. Then sell it for the price of what it is for the printing costs. Because it's not about us having to sit and try and make money out of the gospel. Paul himself said, I don't need your finances. I'm making tents. He was making his own tents and making sure that if people wanted to bless him, they could bless him. But he wasn't going to be having to be reliant on people. And so asking alms, destitute of wealth, influence. So you're not only destitute of wealth, but you destitute of influence. You destitute of the position and the honor that you should have in the house of Yahuwah. Because when you walk with the father, Remember, you are an ambassador of the kingdom. And you might, might, maybe you might not even have all this world's wealth. But let me tell you something. You will have the wealth of the riches of heaven, which should be more than anything else. And remember last week we went deep into this. I'm not going to go into this today because we went deep into it to understand that there are many that the Father is the one who has blessed them to obtain the wealth. He blessed them to obtain wealth. And it's for them to be able to not forget the Father who is the one who gave the wealth. And they will stand accountable before the Father. We will all have to stand accountable before the Father for what we have done with his wealth. So poor means lowly. It means afflicted. It means destitute of Christian virtues and eternal riches. So you see, when he says you are poor, you are destitute of the virtues that you should have of your faith, of the foundations of the faith. 
that is to be able to make you rich in the eternal things, in the things of eternity, in the things that Messiah came to be able to speak about, what the kingdom of heaven is about. And these are the things that we need to focus on. They are eternal riches. A poor person is helpless, powerless to accomplish an end. They are poor and they are needy. So you see, this is where they will find themselves. If they do not, you are going to understand. If you do not allow the the, the purification of the fire that needs to come of the affliction that you're going to have to go through to purify your life of the impurities, of these impurities, this is where you will find yourself. You will find yourself wretched. You will find yourself pitiable. You will find yourself poor. You will find yourself being miserable. Because why? Because the fire of purification is coming to be able to birth within you righteous values, to birth within you Christian virtues, so that we may be able to bear the fruit that needs to come forth. And boy, I have understood this, especially over the last few weeks. That today it was a slap that I needed to receive to say, my child, I am taking you through this because you are the one praying to me that you want to change. So I have news for you. You cannot pray dangerous prayers and think that you're not going to go through the fire. So I have news for all of you. If you are praying dangerous prayers of Father, I want you to change this area of my life. I want to become more like you. I want to be able to reflect your light. I want to reflect your glory. Then I have news for you. You are going to go through a purification of fire. You are going to go through the fire because this is what needs to come. The purification of fire. And so we must understand, we must understand, sorry, that was just the Wi-Fi going. And so we must allow the Father to take us through the things that we've got to go through. Then you must understand the next thing that he tells us is that you are blind. What is that word blind? Tuflos. Blind is the word tuflos. G5185. And that is physically or mentally blind. So it's to be physically or mentally blind, which means we are actually spiritually blind. So we are actually going through. So understand if we do not understand, if we do. Now, this is why I'm saying we are going to understand this church because he's giving you all of this. And then he's saying, I advise to you to go buy gold, buy me gold refined in the fire so that you can become rich and, and with white garments. So you see, you are, you are naked. You are blind. You are poor. So that is why you must understand what is all of this. And that is why we are going to have to understand the refining of the fire. Because if we're not going to understand the refining of the fire, we are not going to understand what we are going through. And this is why these things are important. And so Father wants us to be able to come to a place of where we can go through this purification process because we have to go through the purification process for us to be able to come out with the white garments. For us to come out, we need to be able to go through the purification of the fire in order for us to be able to come out with the white garments, in order for us to be able to come out and shine his light and be able to reveal and reflect his glory. 
Because if we don't do that, we're not going to be vessels to be able to reflect his glory. But you see, everybody wants the glory. Everybody wants to walk and be able to shine and have his glory. Everybody wants the glory, but nobody was willing to pay the price that goes to be able to have that glory because that comes with a price. It comes with a price, and this is what we must understand. And that is why we need to understand what does he mean by the fact that we are blind? What blinds us? If we do not understand what it is that is blinding us, if we do not understand what it is that is making us naked, then how are we going to be able to understand what it is that we need to be able to um, remove from our lives so that we may be able to come right? And so we are going to be able to look at this blindness in a little bit more detail. So blind comes from the root word to fool. It's from the root word to fool. And what is this root word to fool? This root word to fool means to make proud, to puff up with pride, to be puffed up with haughtiness or pride, to be blind with pride or conceited, to render foolish or stupid, to inflate with self-conceit, high-minded, be lifted up with pride, to be proud. So we must understand our pride makes us blind to the wrong ways and makes us blind to the Father's ways. So many times there is a haughty spirit. There is a puffed up prideful spirit. And that is why Yeshua was always constantly calling the Pharisees that they were blind. Why? Because you see, when you are puffed up in your own haughtiness, when you think you've arrived, even in your understanding of what you think you've understood the word, Remember, they were so learned in the scriptures. And because they were so learned in the scriptures, they became haughty. They became puffed with pride and they were not willing to listen to Yahushua. So there's a danger. And that is why Father is really speaking this word and he's needing to speak this word. Why? Because at the end of the day, we must understand that there is a grave danger going on at the moment. And I speak not only for the Torah movement, but in the church as believers, as Christians. Why? There is a grave danger because of what? Because of the fact that we are in a place where we are in a place where we must understand that there is um, people thinking they've arrived because we, we judge our right standing with the Father based on how he uses us. We can never judge our right standing with the Father based on how he uses us. Because if we're going to do that, it means that it puts us in a very dangerous place. Just because the Father uses us doesn't mean to say that we necessarily stand right with him. And so therefore, our wrong doctrines bring us into spiritual pride. And so we were looking at blind and we were looking at the root word to fool. And that is to make proud, puff up with pride, to be puffed up with haughtiness or pride, to be blind with pride or conceit to render foolish or stupid, to inflate with self-conceit, high-minded, to be lifted up with pride, to be proud. So we must understand that our pride makes us blind. And this is why Yeshua had to come. Because you see, many times our own religious doctrines will make us proud. Because we think that we stand. You see, we must understand. Because of the doctrines that we've been taught, because of what we've been taught, many times you will have people that argue what they've been taught and not actually go back to the word. 
And that makes us spiritually blind because we are proud and we are puffed up in what we know. And many times what we know is the doctrines that we've been taught. And not coming back to the truth of the word. And this is exactly what Yeshua came up against when he was standing up against the Pharisees and the Sadducees. You see, though, though, who did he go gather? He was able to gather the fishermen. Because you see, the fishermen were just laymen. They were going into the synagogue every Shabbat. They were sitting in the synagogue and they were hearing the scriptures being spoken. But they were not the learned ones. So therefore, when Yeshua came with authority and power, he was able to speak to them and he was able to speak into the core of their being and they were able to discern that this man was being sent by the Father. And that even though he was coming to speak a different message than what they maybe had been hearing from the Pharisees and the Sadducees, but they were willing to be open in the spirit to be able to hear what he had to say. And they were not, they had to bring down their haughtiness and their pridefulness. So if you stand up in pride, you will not be teachable to learn the truth. And this is why many times Father can bring watchmen. Father can bring, you know, his preachers and his teachers and his evangelists and his pastors and his apostles and his prophets. But it's because of the blindness of our pride in our hearts that keeps us from being able to move forward. And that is what we are going to have to look at today. We are going to have to understand that there is a, um, that there is a spiritual blindness that is keeping people bound in doctrines of demons. And then they will argue their stand. And they will want to give you ten scriptures. But what they don't understand is they don't have the full picture. And if you don't have the full picture, yet you want to argue and take your stand. And so we have to be able to be humble and humble ourselves in being able to come to a place of where we rather come and allow Father to be able to open up the truth to us. And even if someone brings something to you that might not make sense to you, come and pray about it. Don't be haughty. And allow the Father to be able to open up to you what needs to be opened. You see, because this is the problem. Many times it's because we've learned wrong doctrines from the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the teachers and all these people out there. And we've learned from pastors and rabbis and all these people and we're learning all the stuff. And then many times what we argue is not the scripture. We argue what we've been taught, but we don't bring scripture. And many times people will bring scripture, but then they bring it out of context. Because the scripture's got a foundation. And then people want to throw me just with the New Testament. But they don't go and take the foundation of where everything started from the foundational covenant. So it's easy for, for people to just bring all the New Testament. But you see, understand, there's an origin where everything started. And that is why Yeshua said, you cannot come and build on another foundation. You need to have the foundation, and the foundation is the scriptures that has been given from the beginning. So how foolish to be able to think that you can just come now and only just bring a New Testament and not to be able to have the foundation that was given us from the beginning because there's nothing new under the sun. And that is what I love about our scriptures Bible. Because you see, when you see those bold highlighted letters in our Bible, you will see that this comes from the foundational covenant already. It comes from a foundation somewhere. And it's got those scriptures there. And you'll see how many times in the, in the um, renewed covenant, how many times Yeshua is speaking, but he's already speaking from that which was already foundational in our foundational covenant. And so 
Let us go and have a look at Isaiah chapter 56 so that we can see where this was already starting, where the prophets was, the prophet Isaiah was already warning against this. And he's saying in Isaiah chapter 56 from verses 10 to 12, he's saying his watchmen are blind. All of them have been, have not known. All of them are dumb dogs, unable to bark, dreaming, lying down, loving to slumber. And the dogs have a strong appetite. They never have enough. And they are shepherds. They have not known understanding. You see, what do, we, what do we need to acquire? One of the gifts is to have understanding. All of them look to their own way. Every one for his own gain from his own end. Saying, come, let me bring wine and fill ourselves with strong drink. And tomorrow shall be as today. Even much better. So understand, this is exactly what is going on at the moment. This is why the watchmen are blind. And why are the watchmen blind? Because they have been led astray by the, the riches, by the fame, by the fortune, by the, the wealth. And so now, instead of them having to be able to speak the truth that's coming from the Father's word, that will sometimes offend the people. They don't want to offend anybody. So let us speak a nice, soft message that's not going to offend the people. So let's not pin, uh, point out the sinful ways of man. Let us not pin, point, point out the things that are there because it's offensive. So let us just speak a nice, soft message. So that everybody can just be happy. And that's this seeker-friendly church, like David Wilkinson calls it. Seeker-friendly church. We go to church to have a seeker-friendly church. A nice fuzzy feeling that we can leave church with a fuzzy feeling. But there's been nothing that's brought us to our knees in repentance. There's nothing that has actually been preached from a pulpit that's been able to point out the wretchedness and the wickedness of our own hearts and of our own walk so that we may be able to humble ourselves before the Father because we need to understand that he is a one that is going to judge his people. But instead, we want to be able to preach a message that continues to allow people to stay in their sinful way and in their sinful uh, natures and that is not the gospel that was being preached by Messiah Yoshua Messiah Yoshua wants us to be able to bring the truth and that is why he came to be able to bring people back to be able to follow him because he's the only one who is perfect and that is why we, he will be the one to give us his Ruach HaKodesh and it's by the Ruach that he comes to be able to open up our eyes to see the scriptures and so that we may be able to come into truth. And so if we continue to follow watchmen that are not watching, watchmen that are not speaking a message that's turning you from your wicked ways, that's only giving you more and more teaching of the word. So we're just going to puff ourselves up like all the Pharisees and the Sadducees just kept getting more and more puffed up. But they never came to be able to turn from their wicked ways. And that is why John the Baptist came with a message to say, repent. You need to repent. You need to turn back to him. You need to turn back to the scriptures. You need to turn back to the commands of the Father. Because the, the, the Torah was put there so that you may understand what sin is. If you don't read the Torah, how are you ever going to know what sin is? You're not going to know what sin is unless you know what the Torah is. So if you're just going to read the New Testament, how are you ever going to know what is sinful in the eyes of the Father? And this is what we must understand. But now we have these people that want to do away with many things. We are even doing away with the commands. And then we understand why there's idolatry and we understand why there's, there's uh, uh, adultery and we understand why there's murder and why there's all these things going on, disrespecting parents, why all these things are there. Because why? We no longer know how to be able to go to our foundation that gives us the foundation on how to walk holy before the Father. Because he says, be set apart as I'm set apart. 
So then we have a look at naked. So we will cover this about being blind in more detail. But I have had to make you understand that it's because of the fact that we have been blind because of the watchmen, because of teachers and preachers and pastors and priests and all these things that have taught us and we are not willing to many times go back and search it in our scriptures. And that is why we need to be able to have the scriptures. And that is why we need to be able to be in a place of where we can go back to scripture. So let's go and read what naked means. Because the last one is naked. What is naked? Naked is gumnos. Gumnos. G-1131. And this means without clothing. They are naked. They are open, laid bare. Okay? But I want you to understand that naked can also mean with only undergarments that you have no covering, that you have no authority, that you are in your flesh, that you are in the flesh, man, that you are not covered by Abba's glory, but that you are naked because you are walking and working out of your own flesh. And this is what we understand when we go and look at, um, uh, we're going to look at Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3. In Genesis chapter 3, from verse, let's look and see from verses 6. Because this is when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to wake, make one wise. And she took of its fruit and ate, and she also gave to her husband and with her, and he ate. So you see that what made them become naked? The thing that made them become naked was the fact that they went and eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So you see, if we eat from the wrong tree, we are going to become naked. And this is what we must understand. We must understand that many times we want to eat from these trees that are puffing us up with wisdom. But at the end of the day, even that wisdom can be a stumbling block for us because if it's not the wisdom of the word, the same as, for example, what was it that had happened with the rabbis, with the Pharisees and the Sadducees? They were puffing themselves up with a lot of the knowledge that was given to them. And this is what they, they, they get the knowledge from a Mishnah and from a Zohar. And this is all Talmudic writings and a lot of it is Kabbalah. So it exalts us up in our own um, understanding and it might make us look wise but we only become wise in our own eyes because we need to become wise in the scriptures and it, only the Ruach of Yahuwah is the one who really comes by his spirit and opens up scripture to us so that we may see because Yahushua came to open the eyes of those that are blind and so it says and the eyes of both of them were opened so you see, their eyes were opened, but now it was opened because of the wrong thing. And they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loin coverings for themselves. So you see, what covering do you have? Do you have the covering over your life that is the covering of religious, a religious system and religious doctrines? Or do you have the covering that is coming from Yeshua and the Ruach of Yahuwah? And the truth of his word. What covering have you got? Because if you have a covering. That is an unholy covering. You are eating from the tree. Of the knowledge of good and evil. That is not a covering that is going to be able to give you life. Because it brings death. Remember. It's the tree of the knowledge of good. And evil. So even that which looks good. In the end. Will bring evil. 
And so they sewed the fig leaves and together and made loins coverings for themselves. And they heard the voice of Yahuwah Alua walking about in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid from the presence of Yahuwah Alua among the trees of the garden. And Yahuwah called unto Adam and he said to him, where are you? And he said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked. So I hid myself. So you see, when we are naked, we will hide. We will hide in our sin. We will hide in our pride. We will hide in many things. And we hide. And we are actually naked. And so if other Yahuwah doesn't come and cover us, because at the end, in um, Genesis chapter 3, what does he say? And right uh, at the end, he turns around and he goes and he covers them. And he said, and Yahuwah said, see, man has become like one. Um, let me see. He, um, father comes and he covers them. He covers them with, you know, he covers them with, um, with uh, animal skins. He goes and he covers them. I, I know that it's somewhere here. Um, that he goes and he covers them with an animal skin. He, he slaughters an animal and then he covers them. And so at the end of the day, we must understand only Abba's covering is what we need. We need the covering that he brings. We need his way. So you know what? It's not a religious system that we can cover ourselves with. We cannot cover ourselves with our own religious mindsets and our own religious systems. We can only cover ourselves with the Father's way. And his way is what he has put in the word from the beginning. It's that which he has spoken from the beginning. It's that which he has said from the beginning that he wants to be able to use for him to be able to cover us. So they were covering themselves with their own fig leaves. And so many times we cover ourselves with our own righteousness. We cover ourselves with our own good works. But that is not what the Father wanted. The Father wanted to be able to do, it says here in Genesis chapter 3 verses 21, and Yahuwah Elua made coats of skin for the men and his wife and dressed them. Genesis chapter 3 verses 21. He dressed them. So do you see how important it is that Father is the one that's got to dress you? Father is the one that is going to be able to put his anointing on you. It's not an anointing that comes of yourself. It's not an anointing that you achieve out of your own good works. It's not an anointing that you can achieve of anything. The only anointing that you're going to have is the more you surrender to him, the more you allow him to have his way in you, the more you see. That's why this, this Bible is the reflection that we need to be able to reflect in, in order for us to be able to see how we stand with it. This is the reflection that we need. It's his word that is the reflection, nothing else. It's not our good works. So we have to follow him and follow his ways and that which he has already put for us in his word from the beginning. That is the standard by which we need to be able to walk. And that is what he has said. And that is why we need to have eyes to see what is his standard. We need to have ears to hear what is his standard. Because otherwise... You can be doing all these good works. You can go heal the sick and you can go and do all these things and you can go and think that you're standing so right before him. But if you're not coming back to his standard and his commands and his precepts and his ordinances, all of those are just going to be works of your flesh. And so we coat ourselves with our own works and our own religious systems, yet we are naked. Because why? You are not to sow your own fig leaves and put it on you. Father was the one that went to kill the animal. Father was the one who gave the blood of Yahushua. And it's the blood of Yahushua that was shed at the cross that is now going to be able to come to be this, the covering that we need to be able to cover us. And that's why he's the one that's going to lead us by his Ruach HaKodesh into the truth so that we can be able to come back to his standard. Not our own standard. Because you see, it doesn't help you. You can go to church, you can read the Bible, you can do all these things. And you can perceive yourself to be a good person. But yet, you need to understand, many times we cannot see our own sin. Because it's only the Ruach that needs to highlight our sin to us. And so that is why we need to be able to come back 
to allowing the Ruach of Yahuwah to take us deeper into his word so that we may understand where we go wrong. So let us go and read Isaiah chapter 6, verse 9. So that we can see where everything comes, where he's starting to speak about how we are blind. And he says, so this is when he's speaking to the prophet Isaiah. And he's touching the prophet Isaiah's mouth with a coal. Because Isaiah said that I am a man of unclean lips. We start in verses 5 and it says, Woe to me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell amongst the people of unclean lips, for my eyes have seen the sovereign Yahuwah of hosts. So you see, who did he see? When he saw Yahuwah, that is why we, we understand, even as it was with, with um, Jacob had to wrestle with Yahushua to see, to see. And when in that wrestling, when he saw the angel, when he saw, he had to have his eyes open to understand, who are you? Who are you, Jacob? Is what the messenger asked him. Yahushua asked him, who are you? I am Jacob. Yes, you are deceiver. But I'm going to bless you. I'm going to change your name. So you see, we need to have that encounter. An encounter where we need to be able to see Abba Yahuwah in his fullness. And we see many times through the pages of our Bible. But sometimes he might show himself to you in a dream. He might show himself to you in a, in a vision. He might show himself to you in a touch that you feel when you're busy praying. But he wants to reveal himself. And he says... And one of the seraphim flew to me, and having in his hand a live coal, which he had taken with the tongs from the slaughter place, and he touched my mouth with it, and said, See, this has touched my lips. Your crookedness is taken away, and your sin is covered. So you see, who took away our crookedness, and who has covered our sin? Yoshua. Yoshua is the one who's taken away our sin. Yoshua is the one who has taken away our crookedness. Are we following Yoshua? Who are we following? We are not to follow man. We are to follow Yoshua. And I heard the voice of Yahuwah saying, Whom do I send? And whom do I go? And who would go for us? And I said, Here I am. Send me. And he said, Go. And you shall say to this people, Hearing you hear, but do not understand. And seeing you see, but do not know. So here we see. From here already. We're going to have a people that is going to be able to, they are going to be um, hearing, but they do not understand, and seeing, but they do not know. Why? Because if pride is in your heart, you will hear, but yet you will not understand. Because you are not willing to humble your heart. And that is why many times, Father brings the trials and the tests in your life to humble you. To, that's why he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of Yahuwah. Resist the devil and he will flee. So if the devil is on your case, then it means that the father is saying, you need to humble yourself under his mighty hand. You might not like his way of how he's having to deal with you, but humble yourself and allow him to have his way. Surrender. And submit. You see, the problem is people are not willing to surrender. They fight it, and they fight it, and they fight the devil, and they fight everything else, and at the end of the day, they need to submit to the Father. We were not supposed to be fighting all these devils. We are to submit to Yahuwah. We fight the enemy only when the Father shows us that it's because we have an open door, and then we are able to close the door to the enemy. The enemy only has as much authority over us as where we are opening the door. And it's because of our mind, our will, and our emotions. And so if our emotions are out of sync, and our mind is out of sync, the enemy will attack us in our soul man. That is the soul man that needs to be saved. Because the body will follow what the soul man does. So if the soul man doesn't line up with the spirit of Yahuwah, then what do we have? A wrestling that's going on. Let's look at Matthew chapter 23. In Matthew chapter 23, Yahushua is speaking and he's saying, 
Matthew chapter 23 from verses 25. And he's saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you clean the outside of the cup and dish, but inside they are filled with plunder and unrighteousness. Blind Pharisees first clean the inside of the cup and dish so that the outside of them becomes clean too. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you are like whitewashed tombs, which outwardly, indeed, look well, but inside are filled with dead men's bones and all uncleanness. So you too outwardly, indeed, appear righteous to men, but inside you are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. So you see, you might think you do all your lawless, all your, your things on the outside. So even though you might maybe keep the Sabbath and keep the feasts and do these things on the outside, just like they do. You go to the land of Israel and this is what they're doing. They keep the Torah, but yet he's telling them, yet you are filled with hypocrisy and lawlessness. What lawlessness are they busy with? They were still keeping the ways of Torah, but they filled with an iniquity. And it's not just an iniquity of the way they are void of Torah, but it's because they are not looking at the wickedness that is going on in their hearts. So at the end of the day, that is why we have to understand Galatians chapter 5. And that is why the Father brings us into the fact that we still have this flesh man that is still on the throne and this flesh man that needs to be able to come into submission because he turns around and he says the works of the flesh in Galatians chapter 5 from verses 19. You see, this is the problem we must understand. These Pharisees and Sadducees at the time were standing up against Yeshua. Yeshua is trying to bring them a new way. He's trying to bring them the way of understanding that they need to be able to understand that he's come to be able to bring them in a different way. And the way was going to be you need to be able to come back to the truth of the word, the simplicity of the truth of the word. And yet you have added so many things onto the word that you are now have put a heavy yoke upon my people. And you pride yourselves in who you are and you are puffed up and you're filled with pride. And on the outside, you all look so clean, but on the inside, you are whitewashed tombs because on the inside you are filled with wickedness. And these are the works of the flesh, well known, which are these adultery, whoring, uncleanness, indecency, idolatry, drug sorcery. So let's understand this drug sorcery. What are we bowing down to? Drug sorcery in this day and age. Hatred, quarrels, jealousies, fits of rage, selfish ambitions, dissensions, functions, envy, murders, drunkenness, wild parties, and the likes of which I forewarn you, even as I also said before, that those who practice such as these shall not inherit the kingdom of Allah. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, trustworthiness, Gentleness, self-control, against such there is no Torah. Why? Because once you are walking in that, then you're walking out the fullness of Torah already. And so understand, what is he saying to them? You are doing all these good works of yours on the outside. So, so what if you're going to go to church? Just because you sit in church every Sunday doesn't make you a Christian. How much of the word are you putting into practice is what's going to make you a believer. And we must understand that is why the father needs to bring the fire of purification. Because if he doesn't bring the fire of purification, we will be rebellious children that do not humble. And then we have attitudes within us. And believe me, I understand this only too well. And that is why the father is taking us through the fire. And that's why this morning I was before him and saying, Abba Yahuwah, I have mercy. Because just when you think you're out of the fire, you're back in the fire again and you think, oh, Father, he has more fire. But why? 
Because if you are praying for him to be able to deliver you from these things, you see, if you work through this list and you say, Father, I don't want these things in me, then you must understand how are you going to be able to get rid of something that is within you if he doesn't bring you through the test. So that is why you're going to need to endure it and overcome it. The endurance is the, the resilience that you're going to have to get in that test until you overcome it. And believe me, you're going to keep writing that test and keep writing that test and keep writing that test until you overcome. And so it's no use you praying it away. It's no use you doing all of this. And if you do, you harden your heart and you will be this church that will be blind, that will not see. Because every time the, the things are presented to you, you want to pray them away, you want to ex make excuses for them, and you don't want to deal with them. And so we need to deal with these issues. And so this is dealing with the issue of what he, Yoshua is dealing with over here. He's dealing with the fact that he's saying, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, because you build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of righteousness and say, if you lived in the days of our fathers, would we not have taken part with them in the blood of the prophets? Thus you bear witness against yourselves that you are sons of those who did murder the prophets. Because why? The prophets were the ones trying to bring them into the truth of the word, but they didn't want to listen to the words of the prophets because it was offensive to them. And so people take offense. And this is what is happening in this day and age. It says in Matthew chapter 24, brother's going to turn against brother because of what? Because they take offense. And remember, offense is taken. Oh, I will not speak to this person again because why? I took offense. Oh, I will not listen to this person because I took offense. Offense is taken. Oh, I want nothing to do with this again because I took offense. You have a choice. You can either take what the person has said and said, okay, go back and go sit with the father and say, is there any truth in what the person has said? If there's any truth in what the person has said, well, then let me go and check myself. If there's no truth in what the person has said that has offended you, then you have to go back and say, well, you know what? I don't need to take this and I don't need to listen to what this person has to say. But the choice is yours whether you're going to take that offense or not. And this is going to make all the difference in the end in the things that are coming. Because offense is going to be taken. And brother is going to turn against brother because they are taking offense. And then they are upset with their brother. Or with their sister, whatever it is. And that is why he's saying, you murdered the prophets. And why? Because the prophets were speaking the truth of the word and you didn't want to hear what the truth was. And so what did you do? You spoke up against them. And you know, at the end of the day, it's up to the person to make sure that they can stand before the Father and say, okay, I'm listening to what you have to say. And sometimes we might get into the flesh a little bit because we all do. We all flesh, we all flesh beings. And let me tell you, the flesh will get upset. Just you confront that flesh and the flesh is going to climb on its bandwagon. But if you just humble yourself a little bit and come back and say, okay, is there any truth to what the person is saying? And go back to the Father. But don't just go and shoot the messenger. The messenger is just the messenger. And this is what they did. They killed the prophets because the prophets are always the ones that, that are in the forefront the prophets are always the ones that are the trumpet sounding the trumpet and they will always come with the biggest persecution because they are the ones that speak the word. It doesn't mean to say that they are perfect, but they bring the word of the Father and many times the word is offensive. And sometimes it doesn't even matter. <laughs> it's like I've said so many times, I can bring a word sometimes the most loving way and the person will still take offense or the person will still get upset. Because is it really the way that you said it or is it the way that you received it? Because it was, you didn't want to hear what was being said. This is the difference. So let's look at Mark chapter 8. Because yeah, he's looking at the fact that he's saying they were blind because they're not looking at what's going on in the hearts. So what will make us blind 
when we do not deal with the issues of our hearts. We need to bring our hearts before the Father and allow the Father to be able to show us the things that are going on within our hearts so that we can see, not automatically think that we stand right. And that is why we need people there to help us because we cannot always see our own our own um, uh, blind spots. That's why it's called a blind spot. You know, in the car, sometimes that's how accidents happen because there's a blind spot. You didn't see that car. And that's why we put those little things on the mirrors to be able to see the blind spot. And many times we have blind spots in our lives that we cannot see. And that's why we need people around us to be able to help us with our blind spots. Let's have a look at Mark chapter 8. Mark chapter 8 from verses 11 to 20. And the Pharisees came out and began to dispute with him, seeking from him a sign from heaven, trying him. So you see, this is the other thing. Now we're going to look at another thing that makes us blind. And sighing deeply in his spirit, he said, Why does this generation seek a sign? Truly I say to you, no sign shall be given to this generation. Understand, Yah is Yoshua, he's healing the sick, he's opening the eyes of the blind, he is healing the leper, he is, um, you know, turning the water into wine, into the, the purest grape juice. He's doing all these signs and miracles, and yet they still seek a sign. And they had forgotten to take bread, and they did not have more than one loaf with them in the boat. And he was warning them, saying, Mind! Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herodias. So you see, what was he saying? Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees. So you see, Yeshua says, beware of the leaven. The leaven is the sin. So we must understand, we need to, be, we need to beware of the sin. And the leaven can also be wrong doctrines. So it's the wrong doctrines that are given us is the leaven. And that is why we are now in the time. We are preparing ourselves now. Pesach is next month. So we start to prepare our temples to get rid of the leaven that is there. What leaven is in our lives that still need to be cleaned up? And so that's why now it's a time of introspection. It's a time of when the, the, um, you, uh, in, in the Torah they tell, we get told to remove the leaven from our houses. So some, so the Jews now get so busy at this time where they now start to clean up their houses and they start to get rid of the leaven in the houses and they wash everything and they clean everything. But what difference does it make to clean the cup on the outside? And that's what he was saying. You're cleaning up all this on the outside, but inside is where the leaven is dwelling. The leaven is within you. What is it that you are still believing that is a lie? What is it that is a character trait that is there that I still want to change in you? And so I'm saying, Father, that's why now I'm, I'm, I'm really coming before him and saying, Father, I understand you are putting me through the same test over and over. And why? Because there's things that you're trying to bring up to surface. Because you see those impurities need to come to the surface. And that's what we're going to understand next week when we're going to look at the, at the process of what it means to go through the purification of the fire. These things have to come to surface. And how do you know when they come to surface? When you can finally see them within themselves. We know when you go through the same test a few times, you better understand. He's bringing that impurity to surface to show you what is there. To say, okay, can you see it now? You need to deal with this thing. And you're going to keep going through the same test until you deal with it. And sometimes we are blinded to see this. And that is why he says you're blind. You're blind to see the sin that is within you. You are blind to see what is there. But that is why I will put you through the purification of the fire so that I can bring that thing before you for you to be able to see that is there. So he's warning them against the sin of the, Phar against the leaven of the Pharisees and Herodias. And they were reasoning with one another saying, because we have no bread. Now you see, now they are, he's, they're not listening to what Yeshua is saying. He's warning them about the leaven of the Pharisees, but they're still not listening. 
Now they're on about the bread because they thought he was on about the bread. And Yeshua, being aware of it, said to them, Why do you reason because you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive nor understand? So you see, we need to perceive and we need to understand. In your heart, is your heart still hardened? So you see, it's all about the issues of the heart. Is your heart still hardened? Having eyes, do you not see? And having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves, and the five thousand have many baskets filled with broken pieces, did you pick up? They said to him, twelve. And when I broke the seven of the four thousand, and he fed the four thousand with the four thousand with the seven loaves, how many large baskets filled with broken pieces did you pick up? They said seven. So you see, what look and see. Now we're dealing with another blindness. The blindness that we sometimes have of the faith that we should have in our Messiah. Understand what is Yoshua saying to them? Do you not, do you have eyes yet you do not see? And, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? Do you not yet perceive? Do you not yet understand? What are you doing? Did you not see that I took five loaves and two fish? And with five loaves and two fish, I fed the 5,000 people. Then I took seven loaves and some fish. It doesn't tell you how many fish. It said some fish and seven loaves. And I fed 4,000 people. And then there were seven baskets left. And out of the five loaves and two fish, I fed the 5,000 people. And yeah, you are arguing with each other because you only have one loaf of bread. What are you doing? Do you not perceive do you not understand? Where is your faith? Can you not understand that with one loaf of bread, I can feel, f f feed the multitude? But now you're arguing with each other. You're still not understanding. Where is your understanding? Because why? You have the leaven of the Pharisees within you. The leaven of the Pharisees was the leaven that you were just being given doctrines of demons. Yeah. This is me. I am the Messiah who is before you and you do not recognize who I am. This is almost like what he's trying to say to them. You have been so bound by the doctrines that you've been taught, but yet you do not trust your father. Now I am walking before you. Can, I, can you not see the miracles that I have done? So, so many of us come and we stand before the father and he's done such great things in our lives before. But in this little thing over here, now we cannot, uh, no, because now, let's just put it this way. He's done great things in little things. But now because this is big, you see, because we had five loaves, two fish, we were able to do that. Then we had seven loaves, but now we only have one. So now this is an impossibility. All things are possible to those that believe. And this is what he's trying to do. He's trying to get us to a place of understanding that we need to be able to, we are blind in the area of faith. We are blind in the area of trusting him. Do we trust him in all areas of our lives? Let's look at Luke 6, 39 to 42. So we're looking at all the areas of where we are blinded. And this one of you is, like I said, sometimes we are blinded to the things that are there. Sometimes we are blinded to our own sin. And that's why sometimes we need our brothers to be able to help us. And he spoke a parable to them. Is a blind able to lead a blind? Shall they not both fall into a pit? A taught one is not above his teacher, and everyone perfected shall be like his teacher. And why do you see the splinter in your brother's eye, but are not aware of the plank in your own eye? And so you see, sometimes we're so busy trying to correct the other person, but we don't understand that the same thing dwells in us. We are so busy trying to uh, point out the other person's fault, but we cannot see that it results, it resides in ourselves. Or how are you able to say to your brother, brother, let me take the splinter that is in your eye, not seeing the plank is in your own eye. Hypocrite. First take the plank out of your own eye, and then you shall see clearly to take the splinter that is in your brother's eye. So you see, that is why the Father helps us to go through many tests and many trials. 
so that in the end, when we are able to overcome, we are then able to help that other person. But you are not going to be able to help that other person as long as that thing is still residing within you. Because the very thing that you are busy telling them that they need to be able to come right within their lives resides within you. You are doing the same thing. And that is why we need a body. And that is why we need the Ruach of Yahuwah for us to be able to stand before Yahuwah. And let me tell you, praise Abba Yahuwah, you know what, he's so faithful. I mean, I had to chuckle at him just um, not last night, the night before, yesterday morning actually. As I was making my own little plan in my mind. And it was something that I'm supposed to walk in obedience that I was just like wanting to rebel into just a little bit. Because my flesh got on the throne. My flesh got on the throne. A man, in my quiet time, now I'm busy reading the scripture. And the very thing that I'm planning to do in my mind in rebelling, the Father is showing me in scripture that what are you doing? This is what I told you to do. And what I'm talking about has to do with my my head covering. So that you understand. Because now, I, I'm, I'm going to share with you, you know, because it's important that you understand how we stumble in ourselves. And you know what? I don't stand here to make myself perfect. I don't stand before anybody to try and make out that I've arrived or that I'm perfect. Because I'm not. And I will make many mistakes. But... Are we able to bear with each other? Are we able to help each other in our places of where we stumble and where we fall? So let me tell you what I planned. So I planned that I was sitting there and now I've got my, my younger son's girlfriend's parents coming, you know, for supper. And and now, you know, I'm sitting over there and I'm thinking, oh, you know, they're not going to really understand the fact that I'm going to be wearing this head covering and now, you know, they're automatically going to think, you know, what is this woman with her head covering? And so I thought, oh, you know, just for this night, you know, I'm at home anyway, so let me not have to put on my head covering. It's just not important. But the father gave me instruction. In 2014, I started to cover my hair. But now understand, my flesh is wrestling over here. And my flesh was wrestling in saying, I didn't want them to judge me because of my head covering. And now, what was I trying to do? Am I trying to impress them? What am I trying to do? I'm sharing with you my faults and how we reason in our own minds. And this is what I was doing. And so I thought, Ugh, you know, it's okay. They can come for supper, but I, I don't, maybe I can just be normal and they can accept me as normal. But in the back of my mind, it's like there's still this voice saying, and so now what happens the next time? Then are you not going to wear head covering again? And what happens now when you are in public? Because now you are in public. Now you want to you put on the head covering. So what are you doing? But you know how you, you, the, the, you, you wrestling. We wrestle with issues in our lives. And all of a sudden I went to read a scripture. And that morning I was sitting with the scriptures of Leviticus and and Father gave me a specific word. And, and what was interesting is that this was the word that he gave me when, I mean, he, I, I obey instructions. And when he told me to cover my hair, I did. But he had given me a scripture and I'd actually written it next to my Bible. <laughs> next to my Bible, I'd written. And it just so happens that it's the scripture that it pertained to me. And this is in Leviticus chapter 21, verses 10. And it says, And the high priest among his brothers... On his head and the anointing oil, on, on whose head the anointing oil was poured and on, on who is ordained to wear the garments does not unbind his head nor tear his garments. And as I read that, the fear of Yahuwah came upon me because next to it I said, Oh Father, this is the scripture that you have given me that I'm to cover my hair. That's me. I'm not saying that that scripture is for you. I'm saying that's the scripture he gave me. And immediately the fear of Yahuwah came upon me and immediately I repented. And you know how I was tested? I was tested yesterday because I was still busy getting the food ready and everything. And the next thing they arrived. And now I'm standing without my head covering. 
And now it was a case of, oh, well, they've already seen you without your head covering, so why don't you just stay the way you are? I was in a test. And then I, I sat there and I said, well, you know what, now what are they going to think? Now you're going to go into the room and go put on your head covering. And I thought, my child, I just heard the father say, my child, what are you doing? And I said, Abba, forgive me. I go inside and I put it on. And I put my head, head covering on and I came outside and I wasn't interested in what man had to say. Because I am obedient to my father even when my flesh wants to rebel. And maybe this is something that doesn't pertain to you but maybe you are wrestling in another area in your life where you're also making an excuse. And this is how we make excuses for us not obeying the Father. Now this is for me. And I had to obey. And I saw my wrestle that I went on in my own flesh. And so you see, we make excuses for ourselves. And this is what we sometimes do. So... Let's look at John chapter 9. So understand, the wrestle that goes on is the wrestling that goes on because of our mind. And then we reason things in our hearts. And what is it about? Are we still trying to impress people? You see, I wasn't worried about anybody else, but this is now, this is my son, and, and now this is, you know, this is the the woman that he's wanting to marry. And now I'm, what am I doing? You need to still be who you are. You need to be who Father created you to be. And so many times we are not obedient to his word because we are trying to impress people and we are not being who we were created to be because now we are trying to impress people. If this is the way Father created you and if this is the way you are, you cannot change who you are. And this is now what the Father's been trying to show me. He's saying, you're trying to be somebody who you're not. You know, I can try so many times. And I was listening to David Wilkinson and it, it was just concerned. He says, I'm going to try and speak. Um, what do you say? I'm going to try and be nice now. I'm going to try and speak nicely. And I'm going to try and speak, you know, nicely. Sweet. I know he says, I'm going to try and be sweet now. I'm going to try and be sweet. And after a while, he's again just gone off, like gone off the rocker with the people. And I'm thinking, Father, I understand this man's passion. I understand where he's coming from. Yet I'm trying to change myself, but I cannot. Because other is the one. If he's created you the way he's created you, you've got to be the person who he created you to be. You can't be someone else. You've got to be the way he created you to be. And so in John chapter 9, he says from verses 35, Yoshua heard that they had cast him out. And when he had found him, he said to him, Do you believe in the son of Eloah? He answered and said, Who is he, master, that I might believe in him? And Yoshua said to him, You have both seen him. He who speaks with you is he. And he said, Master, I believe. And bowed himself before him. And Yoshua said, For judgment I have come into this world, that those not seen might see, and those, and those seen might become blind. So understand, there are those that saw, but they are going to be blind. Because why? If they harden their hearts and they do not allow the refining of the fire, they are going to become blind. But those that are blind are going to see. And those of the Pharisees who were with him heard these words and said to him, Are we blind too? And Yeshua said to them, If you were blind, you would have no sin. But now you say we see, therefore your sin remains. So understand, once we have seen the truth, once we have been revealed the truth, how do we go back? How? How do we go back? We need to go forward. We need to move forward. 
And this is why I say the enemy will want to trip us up. And we face many tests. And this is why I'm saying the only reason why I can acknowledge tests is because I go through so many. And so, time, so many times in people's lives... I can see that they're facing a test. They cannot see that it's a test, but I understand it's a test. But they cannot see that it's a test. Because why? They pray it away. They pray everything away. Because they don't want to go through tests. They don't want to go through trials. They want to pray everything away. So now we are going to look at Matthew chapter 13 as we start winding up this message. And I'm going to... Um, start closing off this message as we are going to look at Matthew chapter 13 for us to understand what it is that this whole um, church is really about and this church is really summed up in this Matthew chapter 13 in this parable of the sower everything that he's talking about here is being summed up in the parable of the sower and that is why we are going to read these scriptures on that day Joshua went out of the house and sat and it's in Matthew chapter 13 let us read from verse 3 Matthew, Matthew chapter 13 from verses 3 and he spoke to them much in parable saying see the sower went out to sow and as he sowed some indeed fell by the wayside and the birds came and devoured them And others fell on rocky places where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprung up because they had no depth of soil. And when the sun was up, they were scorched because they had no root, they withered. And others fell among thorns, and the thorns came up and choked them. And others fell on good soil and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. And who has ears to hear, let him hear. See, who has ears to hear, let him hear. And the taught ones came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? And he answering said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the secrets of the reigns of the heavens. But to them it has not been given. So understand, the Father is the one that is opening up Who is being able to have the secrets of the heavens being revealed? For whoever possesses to him more shall be given and shall have overflowing. But whoever does not possess, even what he possesses shall be taken away from him. So you see, if you are not going to allow the Father to take you through a purification process and allow yourself to be able to be those that start to be able to bow your knee to what His Word is wanting and what He says, you harden your heart and then you disqualify yourself. And at the end of the day, even that which you possess, you are going to land up losing. Because you will be the one that will stay in this church. You will be pitiable. You are going to be wretched. You are going to be blind. You are going to be naked. You will not have the covering of his anointing because you will be a flesh being that is operating. You might have received your shoe as your Messiah, but you are going to operate out of your flesh. Because of this, I speak to them in parables because seeing they do not see and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. So you see, they were very learned people, very, very learned people, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. But they were filled with arrogance and pride. They were not humble. They were not willing to be able to crucify their flesh. You see, the flesh wrestles. We wrestle. What was it, the testimony that I've just given you now? It was a wrestling of my flesh. Because why? Because in my flesh, man, I wanted to please man. As opposed to being able to be obedient to what my father has asked me to do so many years ago. Look at how many years ago, and yet I'm still having to be tripped up. Just shows you. We are going to wrestle until the day that Yeshua comes. And in them, the prophecy of Yeshua is completely filled, which says, Hearing you shall hear, and by no means understand. And seeing you shall see, and by no means perceive. For the heart of this people has become thickened. You see, if we harden our hearts because of pride being puffed up if we harden our hearts because of unbelief if we harden our hearts because of the deceitfulness of the working of our flesh 
it becomes thickened and their ears are hard of hearing. And their eyes they have closed, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their heart and turn back and I heal them. So you see, this is the problem that we are having. This is the very problem that we are having is the fact that if we, the reason why we cannot see is because we have a heart that has become thickened and we are hard of hearing and their eyes they have closed and he's closed our eyes. And that's why it says in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, because they did not love the truth, I will give them a spirit of delusion because why they have hardened their hearts and they have gone astray because they hardened their hearts. So, and blessed are your eyes because they see and your ears because they hear. For truly I say to you that many prophets and righteous ones long to see what you see and did not see it and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. Now imagine what can we say that we have the scriptures that we, they didn't even have the scriptures. We have the scriptures and we see and we hear yet. Do we believe and do we do? You then hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word, now listen to what is happening in this church. And why is this church? Why is this church at the place of why, where they are at? So why is this church the one that they, he's saying, you are rich, but yet you are poor. So why is this a church that's wretched, pitiable, poor, Blind and naked. We are going to hear it in what he's going to give the explanation. When anyone hears the word of the rain and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is that sown by the wayside. So you see, there's many that come, they hear the word, but because they don't even understand it, the devil just comes and steals it from them. Because they have no desire to want to even understand it. And that sown on rocky places, this is he who receives the word and immediately receives it with joy. So then there are those that they hear the word and wow, I receive it with such joy. And I'm so excited about the word that has been given to me. I'm so excited. Yet he has no root in himself, but he's short lived. And when pressure or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So you see? So what happens? So now yeah, you are. And now you're going to want to keep the Sabbath. And now you're going to want to do this. Just like now you're wanting to be able to be obedient to the Father. And all of a sudden, now you've just received the word. And now... All of a sudden, you're going to go to friends. You're going to go to family. And the family's going to say to you, what is wrong with you? Why are you doing this? You shouldn't. And then the persecution comes. And because the word has no depth in you, because you are still haven't gone deep with the word, you, the pressure is coming upon you. So it says, listen to what it says. So you receive the word with joy and you know that it's truth and you want to keep it. But now look at what happens. There's no root in himself, but he is short lived. So when the pressure comes and when the persecution comes and arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. So you see how many people started going on a path, started being obedient to the father and then the persecution comes and then people start coming up against you and then people start speaking up against you and all of a sudden you don't allow the word to take root in you and then you take that word and instead you go back to your old ways. You go back to the way it was before. You're like the dog that's returning to your vomit. Because why? Because you have allowed persecution or you have allowed the fear of man to be able to come and to be able to take that word and snatch it out of your heart. And that sown among the thorns is he who hears the word and the worry of this age and the deceit of riches chokes the word and it becomes fruitless so you see we can do a teaching I have a teaching that I did just on this 
And let me tell you, this was so powerful. So understand something. What happens? Now the word comes. And now you hear the word. But you are so concerned with the worries of this. So now it's like those. They heard the word. They heard that the sting is bad. They heard the things that the sting will do. They even hearing that the, that the sting might even be the mark of the beast. They are hearing all these things. They are hearing things that are coming. But now what happens? Hmm. The deceitfulness of riches. Because now I might be losing my job. I might lose my things. I might be able to go through these things. I might not be able to take care of my children or whatever it is. And what happens? Then they're going to bow. Because why? The word found no root in them. It was amongst thistles and thorns. It didn't bear any roots. It wasn't in deep soil. They didn't cultivate the, the word far enough. That's what I said. I can't understand. You give people so many, so much truth, so many things, and yet they will still go back. Why? Because they didn't allow the word to take root in their hearts. Because their hearts are still filled with self. Their hearts is still filled with pride. Their hearts is still filled with self. And they don't truly believe our Messiah. And that, and that sown on the ground, on the good soil, is he who hears the word and understands it, and who indeed bears fruit and yields some hundredfold, some thirty, some sixty, some thirty. So you see, the one who's really going to take the word and be prepared to go through the persecution, be prepared to go through the, the deceit, the things that the world is going to throw at them, that doesn't matter what's going to be thrown at them. They are the ones that are going to yield the fruit. A hundred, sixty, thirty. Because they didn't allow the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches. And they didn't allow the persecution and the things that people, what people think and what people say. And the fact that they're trying to please man as opposed to pleasing Abba Yahuwah. And therefore they have not stood. So let us look at... 1 John, as we start to close off, 1 John chapter 2, and it says from verses 15, Do not love the world, nor that which is in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust of it but the one doing the desire of the lure remains forever so if we are not those that are going to do the desire of the lure we are going to not remain forever so at the end of the day we have had a look at this teaching and we have had to understand that there's going to be the persecution are we going to stay miserable are we going to stay blind? Are we going to feel sorry for ourselves being, you know, pitiable in the place of where we find ourselves and woe is me? Or are we going to take our stand and start to look at our hearts and see what is those weeds that are still there that need to be uprooted within our hearts? Do we truly take Abba Yahuwah at his word? Do we truly trust him? Or are we like these Pharisees that we're cleaning the outside, we're doing all these righteous things on the outside, but yet the inside of our cups is still filled with so many things that stand in the way of Abba Yahuwah. And I praise him. I thank the Father for every trial and for every test that he can come and purify us. And so, Father, I just want to thank you for your word, my King. Oh, Father, we are in places right now where some of us are so wretched. We are so pitiable. We are so blind. We are naked. We try and cover ourselves sometimes with our own righteous good works. But you reveal to us that in our hearts there's still wickedness because we still have issues in our hearts that need to be dealt with. And sometimes we pride ourselves because we think we stand so right before you, but we don't. 
And unless you come and you allow us to go through the tests that we go through, we don't even know that those things reside within us. And the minute we allow our God to go down and we start to compromise and compromise and compromise, we fall further and further away from you. And this is what compromise does. And this is what mixed seed does. Mixed seed gets us to be able to go further and further away from you. And we've got so much mixed seed of so much doctrines of demons that has been given to us. And that is why in the end, if we are not those that are going to be able to seek you in spirit and in truth, we are not going to be able to make what is going to come in these last days. And we will not bear the fruit that we need. Because we will either allow the deceitfulness of riches, we will have shallow soil. Or we will have rocky soil. We will allow the persecution to get the better of us. And because the persecution gets the better of us, we will not stand for you. And so when the persecution has to come because we need to stand for your name, if we didn't truly stand in your word and loved you above all things and more than we love our own lives, more than we want to be able to please people, we are not going to be able to stand because the persecution is going to come and take that word out of our hearts. And if we are still bound by the things of this world and the deceitfulness of the riches of this world and what this world has to give us, when the time comes and these things and these tests and these trials are going to come our way, we are not going to stand in that word and we are not going to love your word above everything else and therefore we are going to bow to a system because we've allowed the, the, the thorns and the thistles to choke your word out of our hearts. And then there are others that we just allow the word to just come and be stolen by the enemy. Because of our own attitude of our own hearts. And so I ask you, Abba Father, will you please come and do a deep work within us? Do a deep work so that we may understand that in these last days, we think that we can be like Adam and Eve, putting on our own fig leaves to cover our nakedness. We are naked before you, and you are the only one that can come and clothe us with your righteousness, your ways, not our ways, not we think, not what we think, not what we say, not our own religious systems, not our own golden calves, but that which is your order and your way that you have put from the beginning. And we have to allow ourselves to go through whatever purification process you want us to go through so that we can see what is there. And Father, have mercy on us, I pray. Help us, my Father. And that is why I can have such mercy on your people because I understand how pliable I need to be in your hand because of my own ways that are so wayward towards you. And so I ask you, Father, please will you just have mercy on us, Father. Take us out of the Murray clay and put our feet solid on the rock of Yoshua, the author and the finisher of our faith, the one who will lead us by the hand, the one who says, here I am, just follow me. I will help you. And even though we stumble and even though we fall and even though we might write that same test ten times, you will continue to allow us to be able to be lifted up so that we can go again until we overcome. So I thank you, Father. Help us to be those that will overcome, Father, in all things. I praise and I thank you for this in Yahushua's name. Amen. Amen.